Hi everybody, I'm Chief Meteorologist and Hurricane Specialist Ivan Cabrera. We have not heard that sound in a while, which has been great, right? Uh, we enjoyed a long break. Now it's time really to start talking about hurricane season 2025. Most importantly, because I want you to start getting into that mindset of becoming prepared for what's next. Now we will get to why we're on with you today, which is one of the first few forecasts. Preseason forecast has been published by one of the publishers. This is Colorado State University. Uh, we get uh, over a dozen of them from all sorts of agencies and all sorts of companies, some private, some public, and then eventually we get the NOAA National Hurricane Center forecast coming up at the end of May. Put a pin on that because I want to circle back to that and why we have so many so that we don't get confused as to what's coming this season. But I want to start with the things we look for, right, during a hurricane season or before, I should say, a hurricane season to kind of get an idea of what kind of season is going to be. Are we going to be very busy? Are the storms going to become intense because of very warm sea surface temperatures? All those factors are going to play in. So we'll take them one at a time and then we'll get to the forecast from uh, CSU. So one of the huge things we look at, the key things we look at, believe it or not, even though we have hurricanes in the Atlantic, our conditions in the eastern Pacific. That is important, and you've heard these terms before, because that's where we have either an El Nino during hurricane season or a La Nina. Or like this year, we're thinking something in between, kind of like a neutral phase of the sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific. And I'll show you why that's so important. In an El Nino year, that is great because that is unfavorable conditions for hurricanes or tropical storms or any tropical feature in the Atlantic, which of course is what we care about. In a La Nina, like we had last year, that typically favors an above average season. Nothing to do with the intensity of the hurricanes that develop that has to do with the water temperatures where they develop which is the Atlantic right so we'll talk about that as well because that's another key component of what we look at then there's the wind shear and the added uh, Saharan dust. We had so much and so concentrated of plumes last year of the Saharan dust that really kind of did a number on the seedlings of hurricanes, those tropical waves we talk about that didn't get much uh, action because or development because the Saharan dust was so thick. So the first one I want to talk about is a hurricane season in an El Nino. That is best case scenario because that is a hostile environment for hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean. Why is that? Well, the water temperatures in the eastern equatorial Pacific, right, are warmer than normal. So what that does is changes the circulation, changes the jet streams. All of a sudden, you're going to get these very strong winds up above rolling through the area of development where these systems trying to get going. So if you think about thunderstorms as they rise into the atmosphere, all of a sudden they get knocked over because of the strong winds in the upper levels, and that happens with an El Nino year. Now, here's the thing. These are generalities. This is typically the way the environment works. I will take you back to 1992. I was a sophomore in college. That was a huge El Nino year, one of the warmest El Ninos we've ever had, 1992. It took a while to get a storm, but the first one, the A storm, was Hurricane Andrew, which changed the way we think about hurricanes in South Florida since. So just remember, this is, again, in general, any season and every season is different and anything can happen. But this is generally what happens with an El Nino pattern. Now, the opposite is a La Nina. This is what we had last year. A La Nina is when equatorial Pacific waters are cooler than normal. What that does is it lowers the winds up above, right? And so now you've got weaker shear, which is what we call it, a, a change in wind speed with altitude. That's the technical term for it here. But the thunderstorms that try to coalesce into a tropical storm and eventually a hurricane don't get disrupted. So they're left alone to do their thing. And their thing is usually, you know, moving out towards the west and impacting land masses. But again, even during a La Nina year, things can fluctuate. Last year, because of this and because of what I'm going to talk about next, those sea surface temperatures, that combination got everybody that prognosticates, including us here at Next Weather, we looked at and said, you know, all the ingredients are there for not just a busy season, but a busy season with intense hurricanes. That's where the sea surface temperatures that come up. So let's talk about that uh, because there we are. Last year, we had the warmest ever recorded 
Atlantic sea surface temperatures ever. Not the case this year. Uh, doesn't mean we're not going to get intense hurricanes, but in general, that looks to be less of a possibility or less likelihood because the sea surface temperatures are actually coming back. They're still slightly above normal, but the trend and the signals are to us that these water temperatures will come down even more so as we get into the peak of the season. And so that will have kind of a neutral uh, ballpark here for the storms to work with. So it's not going to be that high octane fuel that basically turns storms like barrel that we had very early last year into category five storms almost uh, in June. That was you know just unheard of and it was because of the sea surface temperature. So the differences here when you see all the reds, those are water temperatures that are above average. I showed you this map last year and it was tomato red. It was it just, you know, one of those things where you just saw it and, and the color itself was like, oh my goodness, you know, anything that develops here is going to have a good chance of getting going. You don't have the upper level winds and all of a sudden the gates are open for these storms uh, to do what they do. Now we did not have the hyperactive season that we had talked about, right? We had an above average season and we did have some intense hurricanes because of those sea surface temperatures. So in general, I think what we're looking at in the main development region, which is what we call this area, we don't really care uh, what happens to the north. Now we care in a way because it can influence patterns across the Atlantic. But as far as where the storms develop, this is the region here, and that is where we don't want water temperatures in the upper 80s to low 90s, which is what we had last year. The threshold for a hurricane or a tropical storm to develop is 80 degrees. We're about, you know, in the low 80s. So I think we're generally going in the right direction as opposed to last year. So as far as CSU, Colorado State University, again, that's one of the universities. There's many and other companies as well that put out of forecast. My problem with this forecast is that it is too early. We still have a lot of data to collect between now and the beginning of hurricane season to get a more accurate picture of what is going to happen. Nevertheless, they've always done this and they themselves say that this is their lowest accurate uh, accuracy forecast in the season. They put several throughout the season. National Hurricane Center waits until the end of May, right before hurricane season to get and grasp as much data so that the forecast is as accurate as can be. So they're going uh, with above average season. 14 named storms is a normal season. Seven or half of those tropical storms become hurricanes and then three of those hurricanes become a category three or higher. That's a major hurricane. So so what is CSU thinking this year? Last year, they uh, forecasted into the 20s, the highest they've ever done. This year, they're going three above. And then as far as hurricanes are going two above and only one above. So essentially, if you put it all together, CSU is thinking, it is going to be a slightly more active season. We don't have the, the explosive sea surface temperatures that we had last year, and we're likely going to go not in the La Nina, which we're still in, but going into a neutral phase, which typically favors more of an average season. Uh, so we just have to get you know as much data as we can, and we'll see what happens. Again, as I mentioned, NOAA comes out with their forecast at the end of May. I'll be up at the hurricane conference. We always talk and you know, get their uh, thinking of what uh, is happening. We're all seeing the same signals and I agree that it will be probably close to an average hurricane season. Uh, but uh, let's not focus on the numbers too much. By the way, these are the names. Maybe you're in them. Maybe you know someone in there. My sister's in there this year, Chantal, uh, as is our floor director here at uh, CBS Miami. So here's the deal. Bottom line, there are early signs of an average to slightly above average season. We don't want to focus on any preseason forecast. You are going to be on social media and you're going to have all these folks and all these you know entities that are going to try to just get their forecasts out as soon as possible. I talked to my colleagues and in a way we feel like in general, it just it kind of gets folks nervous about what the season has and everybody just wants to be first. We don't want to be first. We want to be you know, more accurate. Uh, but even if you get a perfect forecast, a perfect preseason forecast, it doesn't matter. 30 hurricanes 
doesn't ma don't matter if they don't hit us. It's the one that hits us that's important and any season or game for that. You're going to be hearing about which side of the coast of the peninsula is going to get, you know, hit the worst. There's just no way to really forecast that with any accuracy. The Gulf versus the Atlantic. In fact, last year, if you typically look at a La Nina season, we should have gotten a lot more action across the East Coast. We didn't. It was the Gulf uh, and that, uh, you know, is something that we just cannot guess. So what do you do to prepare uh, for hurricane season, right? You do the same thing, whether a bunch of hurricanes are coming and we're forecasting a hyperactive season or whether we're forecasting an average season. Emergency managers don't change the preparations. We don't change what we do here at Next Weather, despite what's coming, and you shouldn't either. You should prepare now. So the one positive thing that I see out of these early season forecasts is that it does get us into the mindset of, hey, you know what? Hurricane season is only a couple months away. Do I have everything I need to be ready for a busy and average or a below average season? Doesn't matter. What's important is that you're ready. And as always, my rule number one, don't be scared. Be prepared. We are not here to do that. We're here to get you ready for whatever comes our way. The next weather team and I are on board with that and we'll keep you posted, not just in the next couple of months, but obviously throughout the season as we take one storm at a time. I'm Chief Meteorologist and Hurricane Specialist Ivan Cabrera.